Hello everyone. This is totally random and I just happened to have some time so I decided instead of just sitting here twiddling my thumbs trying to figure out where to begin and what to do, I would come in here. So I'm going to give it a second to see if anyone is available to hop on. I know a lot of you guys are going to be watching a replay of it so that is totally fine and totally totally whatevs okay so <laughs> awesome I've got some people I've got Angela whoop, whoop. <laughs> so I I have a lot going on in my head right now I have a lot of stuff that I learned this weekend that I really want to implement in so many different directions that my brain is going right now that I'm gonna be completely honest with you I am overwhelmed to the max because there is just so much that I want to share with you guys that I don't even know where to begin, who to begin with. So I was literally sitting here, I wiped off my dry erase board up here to start a fresh month. And I always like to like name my months. Like so like since it's February, I like to think of something that starts with an F. Like January. It was jumpstart January. And so I like I just like coming up with kind of like a theme for my months just as kind of like an initiative or something that I want to stick to and like that's kind of like my goal for the month. So at first I was like frontline February, like maybe work on building my frontline. And then I was like fresh start. I feel like so many of you guys need a fresh start. You need a clean slate. You need to declutter all the junk that is in your head right now and just start from scratch. Just like completely just, I want you to like purge everything that is in your mind right now. All of the negative thoughts, all of the things that you think that you haven't been able to do, all of the things that you think that you failed at doing. I want you to literally like purge and clear those out of your head. So this month is going to be fresh start February. If you were going for a promotion in January and you didn't, it's gone. We're purging it. This is a new month. This is a fresh start and we are going to rebuild from here. Okay. So we are starting fresh and I want you guys, if you've been with the company for a while, I don't even know. My thoughts are going to be all over the place. So just bear with me. Okay. <laughs> so like when I did that poll earlier to kind of figure out where everyone was in their business. So we've got people that are ready to take it to the next level. We've got girls that they want it, but they feel really burnt out. They feel like they're struggling to get where they wanna be. We've got people that have been with it for a while and it's just not going anywhere. We've got people that need to relaunch. We've got people that don't even know where to begin. So I want you guys to take it back to the minute that you first click that join button. If it is anything like my experience was the minute I hit that join button I was filled with emotion filled with excitement like my brain was constantly excited about it. I wanted to share it with anyone and everyone I wanted to post about it 24 7 I couldn't wait for my kit to come I couldn't wait to show people my kit I couldn't wait to show people the mascara I wanted to do what I did what I not done I just wanted to eat sleep and breathe this business and we need to get back to that I need you guys to be able to tap into your excitement. You are not just selling a product. You are selling a story. You are selling a lifestyle. You are entertaining people. And we need to tap into that entertainment factor and that value added factor. So for example, when we went to this Mexican restaurant the other day, they come up and they, they like upsell you like left and right, like these Mexican people. <laughs> and I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. That came out totally wrong. I'm so sorry. I, that was horrible. Um, they like, they just upsell you without like you even thinking about the price. They're like, oh, you got chips. You want guacamole with that? And so we're like, yeah, we want guacamole. Why not? So this experience, they come out, they bring a big bowl of avocado, little cups of onions and and um, tomatoes and all kinds of stuff like you get to make it you get to tell them what you want in it and they make it in front of you we didn't even ask questions about how much it cost because the value that it added to our dining experience we didn't really care until we found out that it was like 26 dollars <laughs> for a bowl of guacamole 
but it was the value that he added to our experience that we didn't really care to think about the price. And that is kind of like how we are with our products. People don't care about the price because they are so excited to get what you have in your hands. They can feel your excitement through the screen that they don't care. They're like, I have to have that product. Look at her lashes. I have to have that mascara. So I want you guys to completely purge the idea out of your head that you are just here to sell a product, okay? You are not just here to sell a product. You are sharing your story of your life. You are sharing your excitement. You are entertaining them with what you have to offer. And you have to kind of think about what kind of resolution is this gonna give them. For my under eye circles, I wanted something that was gonna conceal that stuff. If you've got dark eyes, you're gonna wanna conceal that. You're creating a solution for their problem. But you wanna have fun doing it. You just don't post a link. You don't just post a, a stock photo. You use your face, you use your Y sister's face. You make a fun video. If you don't wanna go live yet, make a video. You don't even have to talk in it. You can put little speech bubbles here and there and everywhere. Share, share, and share, and build an experience for these people, okay? Um, you have to add value. A lot of times, like when we see something when we're scrolling through Facebook that is annoying to us, it's because it's not adding value to our lives. So what is annoying to me may not be annoying to someone else. So this is where I kind of segue into the fact that you need to get over what people think of you. I, for a hot minute, cared what people thought about me in the beginning, and then I was like, hold the phone. They do not get to pay my bills, so they do not get to decide how I am going to make my money, or how often I am going to post, or what I am going to post, if I post about Coca-Cola, or if I post about makeup. Like, people can go on and with their baby mama drama and say, F this, F that, that's annoying. That doesn't pay bills. I'm doing something good for my life and I'm having fun with it and it makes other people feel good. So why am I going to let their opinion of what's annoying stop me from doing something I love and making money while doing it? Okay. So if, if your fear of what people are going to think about you is holding you back in your business, you need to to take a step back and dig deeper. What about it is making you care so much about what they think? Um, it's kind of rooted back to a lot of what we learned this weekend. People react to situations a certain way because of how they learned to survive their environment when they were younger. Between the ages of three and seven, your body learns how to survive its environment. So for example, Deb Erickson, she's the one that trained us this weekend. She was sexually abused by a caretaker for years at the age of three. And her parents would go out of town for weeks on end doing ministry work and she was sexually abused. So she, in her head, she could hear the tires in the driveway of when he got home. And her immediate reaction, she learned to survive her environment by hiding in the closet and putting a pillow over her head. So when things got tough in her life, her immediate reaction to every hardship and anything that caused her pain was to hide. Even when she was up on stage for an award, she ran and hid. She never even got that award because her body had trained her that that was her survival mechanism. So we are trained at a young age how we're going to react to things in our life. And it was definitely a learning experience this weekend. Thinking back to how we react to things and where they're rooting from. So if there's a fear or a thought or a feeling of unworthiness or undeservingness, whatever it is, I want you to really think back to where that is stemming from. What have you gone through or what have you kind of always dealt with that may be showing its face 
at the same time. So you step out of your comfort zone and your body senses danger. And it says, whoa, 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 we're not doing this. So your, your big goals, they're outside of the comfort zone. Your little goals are in here. They, that's where you feel safe. You start to reach outside that comfort zone and your body's like, no, we're not doing this. And so if, you, if there is something that is holding you back, I want you to really focus on trying to pinpoint where it is coming from. People react for a reason. And for, I mean, while we're on the topic, I might as well share, share what I found is I always struggled with my body. That's just, that's not, that's not anything new for you guys. Um, you guys have heard me talk about this all the time, but I never felt enough, skinny enough, smart enough, funny enough, any enough, <laughs> anything enough. You put it in front of enough and I never felt it. Um. And a lot of the way I react to situations has to do with feeling enough. So in one of our core values classes, um, Rob had us kind of map out things in our life and try to figure out what our core values were. And it's funny because I thought one of my core values was independence. I wanted to feel independent and I wanted to feel accomplished and I wanted to be able to do things on my own. But as we talked it out and kind of what they call clicking down, we clicked down and what I realized was I didn't want to be independent. I wanted to belong. I wanted to be part of something bigger than myself. So, so when you can dig and kind of peel back the layers of that onion, you may realize that what you think is holding you back really isn't what's holding you back to begin with. It's deeper than that and you have to peel back that onion and you have to be able to click down and be vulnerable and figure out what that underlying issue is. So here I went from thinking that one of my core values was independence when really it was me wanting to feel like I was belonging or that I belonged to something bigger than myself. So, um, I really tears. want you got, what? You got tears coming? Yeah. I can tell. You all right? I, I, the tears already came. Oh. But can I finish training them? Yeah, sorry. Um, what was I going to say? They interrupted me. Sorry. Um, so if there is something that is holding you back, um, if there is a feeling of unworthiness, if there is a fear of what people may think or a fear of failing, I want you to really dig deeper and focus on where that is stemming from. Because more likely than not, it is um, not what you thought it was gonna be. And it's really, really interesting. And as I kind of absorb all the information that I have learned this weekend, I'm definitely going to be sharing more, but, um, it was, it was incredibly insightful. And if you guys watched the Haley Ragsdale video that I posted, you could, well, actually, no, I haven't posted the longer version. When I post the longer version, which I definitely want to, you're going to see this whole process coming out where she begins digging deeper with Haley. And what happened with Haley starting out having these goals where she wanted to help eight women women that she had already chosen hit the top of the company, it all circled down to her not feeling worthy enough to maintain black until everyone else had had the opportunity to have the success that she had. Like she hadn't paid her dues yet and that she didn't deserve to be at that level of success again. She didn't deserve to be requalified as black because she wanted everyone else to experience that. So I will get my phone charged <laughs> and I will get that video uploaded. It's like a 22 minute long video and it is, it is powerful because you can see as Deb starts asking her questions, they begin peeling back the layers to the whole root of where her feelings come from and how it was hindering her success. She had to give herself permission to succeed. 
she was holding back on her success before she could move forward because she didn't feel like she deserved it. So even wall of influence earners experience this kind of stuff. And so if there's anything that at all that is holding you back from doing live feeds, putting yourself out there and just following your heart and your passion on this, then dig deeper because there's something under there that's holding you back. And comparison is a huge thing. That was another one of my topics I had written down to talk about. Um, you cannot compare yourself to others. You can't. You cannot. You know your business inside and out and you know every single flaw of your business. You don't know other people's flaws of their businesses. All you can see from the outside is face value. You don't know what they're struggling with internally. You don't know what their struggles with building leaders are. You don't know what their background is. You cannot compare your journey to anyone else. And I know this is hard and I know I do it. I sat in a room full of black status leaders and I compared myself. It happens, we all do it, but you have to be able to bring yourself back. You have to be able to snap yourself out of it. And she actually called this pattern interrupt where she made us go, stop. <laughs> she, she literally made us do that. And basically what you're doing is I just went from tears to being like laughing because I interrupted my pattern. And so the same goes for your brain waves and how you, the things that you put in your brain. If you are constantly saying, I'm not as good as her, or I don't, build leaders as well as her. I don't sponsor as well as her. Um, we, we have to like literally interrupt that pattern so that your brain does not hold on to that information. So you have to be like, <laughs> stop. So when you start having these negative thoughts, I literally want you to like put your hand in your face. <laughs> You may look like a crazy lady, but she literally had us do this 10 times over. Like we were yelling in the room, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> it was crazy, but it interrupts that brain pattern and it, you have to continually feed your brain positive thoughts. So it's human to have negative thoughts about yourself every now and then. But whether or not you're able to bring yourself out of that and snap out of it is what different, differentiates you moving forward and continuing to grow and thrive in this business. Um, so I could literally go on and on and on, but I've talked to a lot of you guys today. I've been, I've been private messaging a lot of you guys, trying to get to the root of some of the things that are holding you back and trying to uncover things for you and try to help you see what what is causing you to feel burnout or what is causing you to feel like you're not moving as fast as other people. So I want you guys to understand that you cannot compare yourself. You have to, you can have like 10 seconds to have a pity party and then you got to be back to being your badass self, okay? So you just have to be able to snap out of it. Because what you think over and over and over in your head becomes your truth. And if that's the story that you're going to keep telling yourself is that you're not enough and you're not good enough, you're not a good enough recruiter, you're focusing on all these things that you aren't instead of everything that you are. And that is where you need to shift your focus and you need to keep training your brain that you are enough and you are unstoppable and you're amazing at this. Maybe you're not a good recruiter. That doesn't mean that you aren't going to be. You have to switch your focus onto what you are good at. So do not compare. And if you are finding yourself going down that road, back on up. <laughs> back on up that road and go on down the street, okay? Go down to the happy trails down on the left. Um, I... Call Angel. Yeah, or just talk to Angel. Angel, <laughs> Angel will have you laughing in a heartbeat. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what else. I have notes upon notes upon notes, guys, and I have so much information I want to share with you. It's ridiculous, but um, let's see. You know what? I'm just gonna start going through some of my notes, and if something resonates with you, awesome. Just stop. Okay, just stop. 
<laughs> if you hear if you hear bad thoughts coming in your head, just stop, okay? Um, let's see. This is one of the things that she mentioned when oh, what's on my lips? It's our it's one of our new colors, opportunistic. So it's almost like that spellbound color, but in a lipstick. <laughs> okay. So this kind of goes back to what you guys haven't seen yet is the full Haley, the full Haley book or video. But basically it started as her goal was to be one of the 43 women recognized that got paid as black status all 12 months. She wanted to be one of those people standing. So her goal for getting to that was I have eight women chosen that I'm working with that I want to get to the top of the company. And she made her stop right there and she said, putting a name or a face on a target takes away your control. If you're saying, I want to get eight people to green and I want it to be these eight people, then you're setting yourself up for disappointment because you don't know what's going to happen with those eight people. They may not want it and then that is setting you up for failure because you were so dead set on those eight people. You have to be open to any eight people that want to go to green. You can't put a name and a face on your goal or your target. Um, Cause if you do that, uh, you show up to your conversations with them with an agenda already in mind and you don't hear the right conversation. You're hearing your own conversation instead of the conversation that you need to be hearing. So, um, even though this was kind of eye opening to me because in order to get black status one, I need a certain number of greens. So I kind of had in my head like, okay, I need to get boom, 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 and boom to green. And so I walked away from this weekend being like, I'm open to anyone. Like I cannot put a name and a face on my target if and when it happens it'll happen and it'll be with whoever the women are so you can't put a name and a face on it on your target or your goal because you'll go in with an agenda and when you go in with a hidden agenda then you're listening to key things that you aren't you weren't you miss out on key things that you need to hear um ma, 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 ma. Let's see. A lot of this stuff is going to have to wait for another day. Tell the story about Elise that you told me. I already did. Oh. You weren't here for like 20 minutes of our oh, conversation. I'm sorry. I love you girls. <laughs> I love you girls. <laughs> hey, girl. Okay, let's see. Hold on, I'm trying to get back. <laughs> Twenty percent of your team is going to do eighty percent of the volume. So, from there, one percent of the population is considered high achievers. Three percent are unconsciously competent, which is they don't realize that what they're capable of doing. So, if you're consciously competent, you're a high achiever and you know what you're capable of. You know that you're capable of accomplishing things. 3% of population is unconsciously competent. They don't know that they can accomplish things or that they're competent. Um, vast majority of people, like 90% of people, are unconsciously incompetent. And those are the people that constantly think that they're victims, that they are not capable of um, changing their life. They're not capable capable of being successful. They blame it on others. They blame it on their sponsor. They blame it on the company. They blame it on the cost of the products. If that sounds like you, then you fall in that 90% category. And that doesn't mean that you can't be in the high achievers category. That means that your mindset needs work and your mindset needs a shift. So, and then a smaller portion are consciously incompetent. They're aware that they have no clue what they're doing. <laughs> so if you're aware that you have no clue what you're doing, you are in the highest rate of people quitting, which means we need to get you moving and we need to get you promoting 
fast, fast, and faster. We need you to see what you're capable of and shift you into the unconsciously competent or the consciously competent section as fast as possible. So this is probably like way over your head right now, but she did like a lot of like neuro, neuro, um, neuro, um, what's the word? She taught us a lot about the brain and how it works. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Um, your brain makes stuff up. Did you know that? Your brain hears information. It takes it, thinks that it's true, and then it fills in the gaps and makes up its own story. So you may hear that the grass is green, and then your brain is going to fill in all this information around it, like that... I don't even know. I don't even know where to begin. But it's going to fill in all these other stories. And before you know it, you don't even believe that the grass is green. Even though your brain was told that it was green, you make up all these stories that go around it and surround it. And you don't even believe the grass is green anymore. So you lose sight of everything else because you make up all these ideas and fill in the gap. And then that kind of goes back to that survival mechanism. Um, it's not about what you say, it's your energy. When you're talking to your team and when you're talking to your customers, it has nothing to do with what you're saying. It has to do with your energy. Hey, will you guys go somewhere else? You guys are so loud. Just go somewhere else, please. Why is everyone in my office? You want me to do trainings and... Okay, back to where I was. Was, um... Oh, for those of you that are scared of doing live feeds, okay? You're afraid that you're not going to say the right things at exactly the right time and you're not going to know the wording to say and you're not going to know the name or the color. It doesn't matter what you say. It is the way that you say it and your energy. So it doesn't matter... If you don't know all the words or you don't really know what you're doing, just go with it and have fun with it. And all of a sudden, they don't care. They don't know. They don't know any different. What they see is someone that they really like on the other side of the screen that they absolutely, absolutely love. So it doesn't matter what you say. It's how you say it. Every thought that you say counts and your brain, your brain believes it if you keep on saying it. And that's where the 95 to 98% stat came from that I posted about yesterday. Where 95 to 98% of us don't believe that we're enough. And that's because we've told ourselves over and over and over and over and over and over and over that we aren't enough. And you know what? After, after hearing it constantly, we believe that we're not enough. After years and years and years of training ourselves to not say stop, we believe that we aren't enough. Um, so your triggers, this kind of goes back to what we talked about a little bit ago about your triggers and how, um, you react to certain things because of things in your past. These triggers are caused by prehistoric events. So, um, so we all have either a fight, a flight or a freeze mechanism in us. So when you are faced with fear, does that push you into action? Does that set... Does being scared make you say, okay, I'm doing this. Like, I am terrified, so we are doing this. Or do you freeze up? Do you not even know what to do? Like, you get scared and you freeze. Today, when Jeremy was telling me I needed to do all these Zooms and, and all this stuff, I froze because I was scared and I didn't know where to begin. So we all have either one or we, we all have a primary, a secondary, and then sometimes we, we can be like a combination of all. And then some people, when their fear is triggered, they, they run. They completely revert back to where they were. So for those of you that feel like you're not requal if you're not requalifying for your, your um, highest status, it's because you're scared. You are reverting back to the way you were. You're reverting back to your comfort zone because that's where it's safe and that's where it's comfortable. So... Every time that you go outside your comfort zone, don't just keep reverting back inside your comfort zone. Stay out there. What, Jeremy? Seems like every time like some people get a recruit, they think, good, I got that recruit. Now I can relax. And yeah. 
Did you guys hear that? He said, every time someone gets a new recruit, a lot of times they'll be like, okay, I got a new recruit. She's really awesome. She's going to be amazing. And then you just stop recruiting. This is where you are reverting back to your comfort zone. You want to stay outside that comfort zone. Your big goals are what's outside that comfort zone. So you can't just run out there real quick, grab your goal, and come back. You have to stay out there. Have a party. Maybe get a vacation home out there. Do something. Do things every day that kind of scare you so that you are constantly getting out of that comfort zone and staying out of that comfort zone. And slowly that comfort zone gets bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger. So kind of think about that. Like when you're faced with fear, do you freeze, do you fight, or do you flight? Knowing those is kind of going to help you guys determine how you react to situations in your business. How do you react when a customer doesn't like a product? How do you react when someone says something negative on a live feed? How do you react when a team member doesn't agree with your leadership style? Or when your husband puts you on the spot in the middle of a plane. <laughs> or when your husband puts you on the spot in the middle of a plane and makes me blitz someone. Um, so how you react to these fears, it reverts back to the rest of your life and how you how you've kind of learned to handle um, feeling threatened and feeling like you're in danger. Um, okay, I promise this will kind of be like the end of it. Your conscious mind and your su your subconscious mind. So, um, <laughs> that is my maid of honor book, Angel. <laughs> How did you know? So, you've got two parts of your brain. And the conscious mind is actually only like 3% of like your entire brain. But this is the part that holds everything that is important. It is where you have your willpower, your brain power. This is where you have your discipline. This is where you have um, your goals and your desires and your dreams in life. It may be small, but it is so powerful. And that is, it gets distracted easily. <laughs> Actually, she said it gets distracted every six to eight seconds <laughs> and has the attention span and memory of about 20 seconds. <laughs> so then you've got your subconscious mind, which stores your beliefs. It never loses focus. It follows rules and it listens. Everything that you feed it, it stays there. And it just stays and stays and stays. So if what is in your subconscious mind is not something that you want to believe. So say you, you come into this business and you're ready to go and someone says something to you. And then all of a sudden you revert back and you say, I'm never going to succeed at this. I'm not good at selling. I'm not getting anyone to join my team. The makeup's too expensive. Um, I know so-and-so that does it. You have to rewrite everything that is in your brain. Everything that you are telling yourself right now is bullshit. Do I have to say that again? If you have kids in the room, I am really sorry. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. Bullshit. Bull donkey. Bull donkey is what Jeremy told me to say. That is your limiting beliefs from your entire life that you have trained yourself to believe by saying them over and over and over. Every experience in your life where you have reverted back to that way of thinking is reaffirming everything that you believe. So you have to rewrite your story in your head. So that's where we come back to that whole stop thing. I know some of you guys are just tuning in. When you feel like you're going down that path where you're gonna start ripping yourself apart because you're not pretty enough, you're not sponsoring enough, you're not selling enough, you're not promoting fast enough, all of those things, that's where you gotta stop. It's where you gotta throw your hand in your face a few times and say stop. Because you need to rewrite that story in your head. I am enough, I can, I will, I am unstoppable. I am me, I am going to succeed. I am gonna sponsor. Stop focusing on the things that you are not doing and focus on the things that you are doing. And focus on the things that you can do and that you will do. You have to rewrite that in your head. And I am not perfect by any means. This is something I struggle with myself. So by me talking to you guys, you guys are my accountability partners here. 
I am retraining my brain every day too. I have to work on more personal de development because this weekend has definitely uncovered a lot of unresolved stuff that I have with myself. So, um, goodness, here comes the tears again. <laughs> um, so you. I am not perfect by any means. And I want all of you guys to feel that you will and you can and that you guys are going to be at Black Status Retreat and you guys are going to be able to stand up on stage with Derek and Melanie and that you guys are going to be able to accomplish everything that I have accomplished and that Kylie's accomplished and Lorenda and Christina, all of our uplines. Um, but we have to start with our mind. We have gotten too far away from our mindset training. We have gotten too far away from our personal development. We have to focus on our mind. Yes, our, our business is about selling products and parties and sponsoring and all this stuff, but we're not gonna be able to do all of that stuff and help change people's lives if our mind isn't in the right place. So we have to get back to filling our cup because we can't give from an empty cup. We can't give the best to our teams. We can't give the best to our customers. We can't give the best to our families if we are pouring from an empty cup. So if you do not know what personal development is, we need to chit chat. <laughs> I've got a long list of books that I can recommend to you. If you are not a book reader, I can give you audibles to look up. I can give you YouTube videos galore to search for. Whatever your style that speaks to you, whatever it is, I can I can show it to you because personal development it was was a crutch for me in the beginning. I needed that personal development because when I first started, my mindset wasn't where it needed to be. And as I continued to grow and strengthen my mind, it began to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Your brain is a muscle and it needs to be worked and it needs to be worked daily. And I noticed that when I slip back from my personal development, so does the strength of my mindset. And so does my, my reaction to say stop to myself. You know, um, and my husband wants to choke me when... <laughs> when I um, cut back on my personal development. So your reaction time to turning it around, it slows down when you're not working on your personal develop development. So, <sighs> goodness. I think that's it, guys. Um. Oh, it's not it. No, no, it's not it. I need to go over this real quick. So these same limiting beliefs that we are believing in ourselves... Those are trickling down into our teams. If we believe that we aren't worth it and we believe that we don't deserve success or we don't believe that we are competent and capable of being wall of influence earners, that is going to trickle down into our teams. And they are going to start feeling that same unworthiness and that same lack of belief in themselves. So if you as their leader and their upline is not strong enough to um, to keep your own head on your shoulders straight, it's going to continue to trickle down within your team. So you have to demonstrate what is possible for your teams. And you have to be, you have to take care of yourself too. We are all about our teams and we are all about helping others, but we forget so much and we spend so much time building up our teams that we don't build ourselves up. And that is going to trickle down. So you have to show them what's possible by taking care of yourself and what's going on up here. The conversations that are going on up here. Why are you just staring at me? Because I know you're right. I mean, I've seen both sides of you and your head plays a lot of things on you. My head makes up a lot of stories. It does. I mean, like what I told you guys before about how your brain makes stuff up. My brain makes up a lot of stuff. And she, <laughs> Deb even told us, she was like, it's funny because after I do some of my public speaking engagements, I'll have people come up and say, wow, it really amazed me when you said blah, 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 blah. And she's like, I never said that. <laughs> she's like, in every single event that I go to, someone thanks me for saying something that I never even said. She said, they hear something 
and their brain makes up the rest of the sentence for them. So, it's, <laughs> so what we hear in our heads is not always right. It's not always true. And we have to be able to rein it back in sometimes and be like, okay, cuckoo and the cocoa puffs up here. Z, z, and z. What, Jeremy? <laughs> He's like the little second grader, like, oh, question. I'm just saying, like, if you have a negative mindset not doing personal development, what you hear could be everything could be going, you're hearing it in a negative way, and you're taking it to a dark place versus taking it to a positive and yeah. to a positive place. If you're not working on personal development, he said, you may be hearing stuff, and instead of it being, a positive. <laughs> instead of it going in your ear and being a positive like it was meant to be, you're taking it to a negative place because your brain can't kind of sort that information. And I think Deb actually has a free resource on her website, which I'll put the link below. Um, it's an audio thing that you can listen to. And I guess depending on like traumas that you had as a child, if you had childhood traumas, I guess one side of your brain responds versus the other, I think it was. And so it's this audio thing where certain things are going in one ear versus certain things are going in the other ear. And so depending on which side of your brain hears certain things, it is all going to like speak to you. So <laughs> that did. I don't even know how to explain that because I haven't tried it yet, but she was explaining how depending on traumas that you had, certain people hear certain things through different sides of their ear. So the audio, I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. It's like, I don't know. Hold on. Let me try to log into my computer so I can give you the scientific name of it. Her website is ICanInstitute.com. Let me, I'm pulling up the official name of what that is. It's put your brain in the fast lane. Supercharge your business with a free mindset motivator. And it's a free MP3 that you get. Let me let me type in my info. If you haven't read it right yet, you are a badass. Yes, you are a badass. It's a great one that I absolutely love, and I love um, the ten times rule. That is probably like my favorite. I thought you were a badass, Willis. Right now, ten times rule is my favorite. Well, which one should I read first? You are a badass if you're struggling with your mentality. Yeah. If your mindset isn't in the right place, then definitely start with You Are a Badass. And I actually posted the free YouTube version in Boss Babes today. So you won't even have to purchase the book. If you are more of an audio learner, you can just sit there and listen to it while you're in the bathtub or while you're cooking dinner, whatever it is. You can just sit there and let them take you to church because it's a really good book. I think she cusses a little bit in it, if I'm not mistaken. So, and people, Megan be, was a lunatic, so I swear by that book. Don't listen to her. Yes, you were. <laughs> don't listen to him. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed being taken to church today because I had a lot of information to kind of get off my chest. And to be honest, I have so much information that I, did, I just didn't know where to begin. I know that certain people need help getting started, certain people need to relaunch, certain people are comparing themselves to others, and so I figured this was the best way to kind of cover everything at once for now until I can figure out how to individually, like, work with certain groups. Does that feel, feel good? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Thanks. They're really not that white, but I totally agree. What? They said my lips look really white mm -hmm. with this lipstick. It could be my selfie light. Yeah. I have the phone case light on. They look white today. Ten really times white. rule is amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Like, I would do one chapter every night, and then, like, my inspirational post at the end of the night would be surrounded around my takeaway from that chapter. Oh, I just love it. I seriously love it. Um, another one is Tap Into Greatness. That was one that they gave us at convention for the Purple and Blacks 
um, training. Tap into Greatness was really good, too. I haven't even finished it, actually, but she was an amazing speaker, and she was phenom. Did you touch on my uh, thought process from earlier about the leaders and flying troops and all that when we were in the truck at preschool? No, because I was not understanding your thought process. Okay, we'll have to He'll have to make a video for you because he's got lots of information he wants to share with you guys, so... We might just have to have a a live a live feed with J Dash. Yeah, all in favor, say aye. Yeah, say aye, people, say aye. No. Tell him that he needs to go live and answer questions. There's bursting smiley faces. <laughs> smiley or laughing faces. Laughing. We got some thumbs up. Courtney, you are late to the party, but I took you to church. Congrats, Andy. So, um, you're getting lots of eyes. I think you need to go live, boo boo. Let them know to put their spouses in my group that Andy won 100 bucks. Yeah, congrats to Andy Goodman, soon to be fiance of Courtney Hughes. <laughs> now, your put a ring on it, Andy. Put a ring on it. Um, but yeah, he won a hundred dollars just by being supportive in her business. So if your spouses are not in the bosses or boss the boss babe babes bosses. bosses group for the spouses, then you definitely want to get them in there because Jeremy, Jeremy likes to spoil the guys for working, working with you guys for knowing the back office for helping be an extra set of eyes for you guys. Yes. Yes. There is a hot, there is a husband, spouses, boyfriends group. And yeah, Angela, you need to get Brennan on there. He needs to get on Facebook. Cause he you don't have to be married. Yeah, you don't have to be married. It can be a boyfriend. It could be significant other. Boyfriend, anybody. Yeah. Significant other. So yeah, you don't have to be married, but if they are supporting you and helping you with your business, or even if they're not supporting you, but you want them to support you, and maybe they don't understand what it is that we do, this spouses group is amazing at being able to open up their eyes and just give them a safe place where we aren't allowed, where they can voice how they're feeling. And no presenters, I will not no presenters are allowed except for me. I get to be a fly on the wall. But um, I don't do much in there. Every now and then I'll creep to see them like shouting out their babes and everything for promotions and but it's a great place for them to be able to to voice their opinion. Like there's been there's been a few guys where they're like I work X Y and Z hours and she's at home all day with the kids and I come home and she hasn't done anything but she says she's been working. What gives? Like I don't think I can do this anymore and they were able to help him through it and be like, I know how you feel. I felt the same way, but it is worth it for X, Y, and Z. Like it was worth it. And, um, so I will, I will, um, it's the boss babes bosses. Boss babes is one word. I'll post the link, but ladies, no presenters allowed. Don't even try. You won't get approved. <laughs> We double check everyone to make sure they have a, a spouse that's on our team. So don't even try it, ladies. I can't find it, I don't accept them. People have tried, so don't try to be sneaky Most on me. Team so uh, yeah, I guess a lot of our teammates have tried to get in there. Um, so yeah, I am gonna let you guys go. I know this has been long and all over the place, but yeah. You missed it, but go back and rewatch it. it. There was a lot of juicy nuggets in there, hopefully. I, I think there was. Hopefully you do. But I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. 